They want to crucify me. They want me dead. There's hate that surrounds me. You can feel it, just like any other prophet. Only me, I'm the return of the Christ. This is a quote from a man who goes by Nature Boy, aka Chief, aka the Three God, aka Eligio Bishop, which is his real name. Victims of his cult have been speaking out for years and finally felt vindicated when he was arrested in April of 2022. Since his arrest, more disturbing details about him and his cult have surfaced. So today, we are going to do a deep dive on Nature Boy and his off-grid cult, Carbon Nation, which has gone by several other names. This guy really likes to rebrand. So let's take a deep breath and mentally prepare because it's time to let the fresh air in. Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome if you're brand new. My name is Erin and I am fascinated by all things cults, true crime, and unique spiritual practices. If you like this sort of thing too, please consider subscribing. I would absolutely love to have you here. So without further ado, let's just jump right into this video. Last week, I received a text from a dear friend. He asked me if I'd heard about the new cult in our state because someone he knew had almost been selected to be on the jury for the trial. As he began sharing details, I was intrigued immediately, especially because I used to live in this town where this guy was arrested. So it just felt like this small, tiny world. Like, was I living there when this was happening? Now, obviously, his friend couldn't share any actual details, but what he could share was one tidbit about the cult leader forcing women followers to drink his seed because apparently it would make them more fertile and closer to God. So obviously, I had to go down a rabbit hole and try to figure out what the heck this was all about. And what I discovered has been alarming, disturbing, upsetting, and I want to offer a trigger warning right now for the following things. There's psychological, emotional, and physical abuse to men, women, and children. Trigger warning for child loss. Trigger warning for the R word. Overall mental manipulation. So please take care of yourself. If this is a video that you're like, I need to skip this, please do because there's also a trigger warning for child loss. And I'll do my best to try to remember those triggers as we move through the story. So if you want to listen to it a little bit and just kind of fast forward through those triggering parts, I'll try to do my best to create timestamps and all of that good stuff. So I'm basically shocked that I didn't know about this group sooner because there have actually been many channels who have covered it, including Noor Jasmine, Real Life Productions, Sean Davey Way Show, King World, and more. There's also tons of videos on Nature Boy's YouTube itself, so if you're curious to learn more, you can definitely reference all of those channels. So obviously there's a lot to cover, and I'm sure there's even more that I haven't discovered yet. There's I feel like hundreds of not just like quick little videos all over the internet, but I'm talking like two and a half hour live streams. So there's a ton of information out there. So if I finish this video and you're like, I need a follow up, I need a part two, just let me know down in the comments below and I'd be happy to dive even deeper. But I might need a little bit of a mental break because again, very disturbing details. Furthermore, his trial date is currently set for February 20th of 2024, so just in a few weeks. So I definitely plan on doing a video to cover the trial because I'm sure we're going to learn a lot more details that weren't publicized. So with all that being said, let's learn all about the evil that is Nature Boy. On March 30th, 2022, a complaint was made to the Special Victims Unit regarding Nature Boy, a.k.a. Eligio Bishop. The woman claimed that after being physically 
fact, she decided to leave, and in response, Eligio not only R-worded her, but then posted videos of other times the two had been intimate on Twitter and perhaps other websites as well. An investigation went on for two weeks, and although his remaining followers complain that that's not enough time to do a thorough investigation and they're claiming corrupt cops, since there's so much on social media that Nature Boy himself has posted, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that investigators were able to get a lot of evidence in a very short amount of time. Alicia was very public with his abuse. I mean, he considered himself to be a king, a chief the messiah. And that meant that he could treat people however he wanted to. But people were starting to become alarmed by what they were seeing online. And the cops had been called multiple times because of these live streams that he and his followers were doing. So on April 14th in 2022, he was arrested after a raid was conducted on the Decatur home. And he's been held without bond ever since. So who is this guy? Who is Eligio Bishop, a.k.a. Nature Boy? And how did we get here? Eligio Bishop was born on April 29, 1982, making him almost 42 years old. According to an ex-member, he had a difficult childhood. His parents died when he was young, so he was in and out of foster homes. After one of his foster parents adopted him, they also allegedly abused him. And I'm not sure what kind of abuse he experienced, but that is just what one of his ex-followers shared. He grew up in New York, but then ended up in Atlanta, where he had a number of different jobs that included being a model, gay escort, stripper, and he also engaged in photography. He even claimed at one point that he was working for the Monique show, but I think it's just hard to believe anything this guy says, and I haven't been able to find any confirmation regarding this claim. So between 2009 and 2011, he began engaging in criminal activity, and even though the followers that remain loyal to him deny that he has a criminal record, he does. And it includes theft, aggravated battery, forcible entry, and driving with a revoked or suspended license. It seems that in 2014, though, he decided to make a change in his life, and he wanted to become a licensed barber. Sounds like he was trying to better himself. But he must not have enjoyed being a barber too much because at some point he began posting vlogs on YouTube and he failed to renew his barber license. The earliest video I could find was in December of 2015 where we first see him begin to claim that he was the second coming of Christ and that when you were engaging with his content, you were, quote, entering the kingdom of God, unquote. His target audience was the black community. He believed that black people were superior to all other races and thus closer to God. And it's my understanding based off of the information I saw in the BBC documentary, which I will list down below, but he seemed to promote the idea that the darker your skin was, the closer you were to God. He first called this group the Ethereans, but later changed the name to Melanation, and this attracted several black men and women to his group. He posted a lot on social media and began growing a decent following. He began talking about how America is basically the modern-day Babylon, kind of taking on the Rastafarian belief that Babylon was basically the material world, a world that was created to exploit and even enslave people. And due to the nation's rich history of oppressing black people, this resonated with many within the United States. He was lifting black people up. And we can't really forget the culture of America at the time. Moving into the 2016 election where Americans were having to say goodbye to our first black president, it was an election year and things were becoming incredibly violent and volatile online. Racist rhetoric seemed to be becoming more normalized on social media, and a lot of people were beginning to feel concerned about the future of our nation. So due to the timing itself, I can definitely see how what Nature Boy was preaching would resonate with some people. But that doesn't mean that what he was sharing was the truth by any means, but people of all races in America were looking at alternative lifestyles. Furthermore, a distrust of the media and government was kind of being pushed, and people were looking more and more towards influencers to seek the truth. So I can see how Nature Boy's audience was basically prepped for what he was trying to say, and I can see how what he was preaching might resonate with some people who were just 
tired of what was going on at the time and wanted to kind of escape. A lot of people were simply looking for alternative lifestyles. So abandoning capitalism and the structures within it resonated with people, and Nature Boy was spreading this ideology far and wide. Part of his belief was that people with more melanin needed to live closer to the equator and get in touch with nature. The energy of the center of the world would be better for them and it would heal their bodies and their spirit. He believed that living in a tropical area was the most ideal environment for his people to live in because he said that the darker your skin became, the more intelligent you were. So all black people needed to live somewhere with him where they could be outside in the sun all the time. He really believed that black people were superior and the darker the skin, the better. He's literally quoted as saying, and I really hate this word, but I am quoting him, that if you lack melanin, you are genetically, yeah. So it would obviously surprise a lot of people when white people started being brought into the cults. But we'll get back to that a little bit later. He encouraged people to become one with nature, both in body, spirit, and location. There was also this doomsday aspect to this cult as well. Nature Boy basically preached that nature would be taking over the world once again, that nature would basically find a way to kill all of humanity. But since Nature Boy and those who followed him were the, quote, chosen ones, they were the ones living in nature, reconnecting to the earth, that nature would then spare them and they would get to repopulate the earth. Real original, dude. Because only every single doomsday cult leader ever has claimed to be the chosen ones and then they need to repopulate the earth with a godly seed. I just... The lack of originality these chosen cult leaders have really just shocks me sometimes. Like, if you're the chosen one and you have this unique, special, divine link to the spirit world or God or whatever, you really can't come up with a better, more unique belief system besides, oh yeah, something's gonna kill us all and if you follow me and then sleep with me, we'll repopulate the earth. I mean, come on. It's just like, come up with something new. I'm sorry, it just really frustrates me. Anyways, eventually in 2016, he would move to Honduras in an effort to embrace his new nature-centered philosophy and lifestyle and, of course, be closer to the equator. Although some people believe that he had ulterior motives, like the laws in Honduras might not be as strict as in America and he could act out some of his more disturbing fantasies there without anyone ever being the wiser. And of course, like all cult leaders before him, he encouraged people to join him, to live in community with him. He allegedly claimed to have large pieces of land where it would be safe for people to live and even bring their children, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So he's telling people he has these safe spaces to live. He's claiming to be the chosen one or the second coming of Christ, and he's encouraging people to leave their capitalistic life to move to wherever he is in Central America. But in actuality, he was just renting out Airbnbs. Like, the properties weren't actually his. He didn't own them. He was just renting the spaces. So you wonder why he had to move a lot? Well, that was part of why. But he was able to convince people to uproot their lives and move into these massive Airbnbs with him. When the people did arrive, he demanded that they not just give him money, but he demanded that they let him control their bank accounts. He got access to people's debit and credit cards and even forced people to give him their PIN number so he could access their money at all times. He claimed that this money would provide for the group, and they needed to not allow themselves to be so attached or distracted by money. He claimed that it was all this capitalistic, bad, evil distraction. I mean, like, of course. Of course. Classic cult leader behavior. Destroy all attachment to the material world. But you know what? It's cool if I'm still attached to the material world. So just give me your money because I'll be able to control it for you. He even claimed that at some point someone had donated $300,000 to him, but it's not a donation if it's a stipulation of living with you. That's called coercion. And who knows what he did with all that money because according to him, he spent it all. 
on the cause. But you're like living in Airbnbs and making the people sleep in tents. Like that can't cost $300,000. There's just no way. So did he really get the money or did he just claim like, we have plenty of money to take care of you. Just drop your life and come to me. Who knows? When they arrived, he would also give them a new name. They had to strip away their previous evil Babylonian identity and embrace their godlike identity. Erica Carroll is an ex-follower who has been very outspoken about her experience being in this cult. And I just want to bring this up real quick because it was a little confusing for me. In her 11 Alive interview, they kept saying that she joined the cult in 2006 and left in 2007, saying that she went to Honduras in 2006. But that doesn't fit the timeline that I've seen from all of my other sources, including other interviews with other victims slash survivors. So I think that 11 Alive might have misreported this or had a typo because he didn't even create the cult until 2006, to my understanding, unless there was like part one and then he took a break into part two. But he would have been a lot younger in 2006. And I think that was when he was trying to figure out what he was doing. He was becoming an escort. He was a stripper. It was before he had committed other crimes. And then he decided to create this cult after he decided to be a barber. And 11 Alive is the only resource that I found that reported 2006, except other resources that used 11 Alive as a resource. So I wanted to share that because maybe I'm wrong or maybe I misinterpreted something. But I just want to make it clear that every other resource that I've used or seen has used the years 2016 to 2017 and has stated that the cult was only alive for like seven years. So I just want to make that clear. But if I misinterpreted anything, of course, please correct me in the comments. Anyways, Erica says that when she arrived, she was given the name BP, which stands for Blueprint, because she was one of the very first members. And this, for some reason, makes me feel like that would just put a lot of pressure on her. Like, you're the blueprint. You have to be the example. You have to do everything perfectly. It just feels like with a new identity like that, there's this unspoken expectation that's extremely high. Like, you have to be the example for all future followers. But I could also see it having the opposite effect. Like, Maybe it gave Erica a boost in a way, like you're the first of the believers and you're going to be so rewarded, like you're the blueprint, like you're perfect. It's either way extremely manipulative. But she says that when she entered the cult, she had good self-esteem, but over time, that good self-esteem was broken down. And this is a classic cult tactic. They're going to boost you up, love bomb you, make you feel like you made the best decision to drop your entire life and move with them. But then they're going to start breaking you down, nitpicking you, making you feel small, making you feel dependent on the leader. Because if you feel small and like you're not capable of making your own decisions, if you don't have confidence in yourself, you're less likely to leave because you've become so dependent on the leader. And when the leader has broken you down, There's this kind of subconscious reaction where you're like, I need their approval again. I need their approval again. And when you don't get their approval, it can really ruin your self-esteem. And he was controlling all of her behavior. She had a strict routine. Every day she had to wake up, eat fruit, and then they were forced to eat a vegan diet. And from the sounds of it, it sounds like it was probably a raw vegan diet, but of course I'm speculating on that one. I just know a lot of people who have been encouraged to live off the grid and be vegan are oftentimes foraging and only eating raw fruits and vegetables. She said they would work every day and get this, she said that they weren't even allowed to sleep in the house you know, the house that they were all encouraged to move to because there was plenty of room for them, the house that the leader was staying in separately from them. No, they weren't allowed to stay in it. They had to stay outside in tents. I mean, how utterly demeaning is that? Like, you're not good enough. You're a different being than I am. So you have to stay out in a tent. 
And that's another tactic, though. It makes you devalue yourself and value the leader more because only the leader gets to stay in the house. We're the ones that do all the work and serve the leader. The leader's doing more important work, which is on this spiritual level. Erica said that they would have to endure these long group meetings and they were sold as a way to like connect and share, but it was really just a way for the leader to talk for like a really long time. He just wanted their time and attention. Like you weren't allowed to go to bed until Nature Boy was done talking at you. Nature Boy claimed that these meetings were his followers facing demons and he was receiving downloads and sharing those downloads with them. But it was really just him essentially berating them or venting about his woes. As Erica put it, she felt like he was just projecting on them. Erica said that she was constantly being told that she was doing things wrong. So this obviously meant that she would have to keep working and trying to do things right and, like we said before, regain his approval. It seemed like whatever Nature Boy wanted was exactly what happened. He preached that one should free themselves from the controls of capitalism and society, but he, in actuality, was constantly being a puppeteer. Another woman named Velvet spoke out about her experience in Costa Rica. She actually went because she had connected with another follower on social media, and of course the lifestyle was alluring to her. But she was really mostly interested in one of the followers. However, Nature Boy wanted to be with her. So in front of the other man, he would ask, are you sure you want to be with him? And she stood firmly and said, yeah, I want to be with him. And initially, she loved her experience there. She loved foraging for the fruit and harvesting water from the nearby waterfalls. She loved that nudity was embraced and the men around her didn't gawk at her while she was topless and near them. And I can attest there is something incredibly freeing about being nude with other nude people. It kind of just desexualizes you in a way. Like, if you've ever been to a Korean spa, clothes aren't allowed in some of the pools. And so you're just naked and everyone around you is naked. And you just kind of observe and realize, wow, everyone is made so differently and so perfectly. And for me as a woman, it's really empowering because then I start appreciating myself more and just loving the role my body plays in my life and how it keeps me healthy and it makes you realize that our bodies are just there to keep us alive and every single one is so beautiful in their own way and especially being a woman being around men who aren't sexualizing you simply because you're naked it's honestly got to be so incredibly refreshing but that's just from my point of view, everyone feels differently about nudity, and I'm not in any way trying to push nudity on anyone. I'm just trying to make the point that I try to make in all of my videos and try to find the good things that drew people initially into the cult. Because most people don't know they're joining a cult. They think they're joining something that's going to add value to their life, make them a better person. They think they're joining something that has a mission. They think they're joining something that could make the world a better place. For instance, there is a point in my life where living off-grid and connecting with nature and foraging your food while not having your body sexualized every day would have been so intriguing to me. And I understand why Velvet really felt free and possibly even empowered when she first arrived in Costa Rica because it didn't look like a cult to her. As time went on, though, she expressed that Nature Boy slowly started to begin sharing polygamous points of view. Like, it's totally fine for you to want to get intimate with someone who isn't your partner. He allegedly would assign couples and then later swoop in and just sleep with the woman himself. Plus, he was involved himself with multiple quote-unquote wives, and it's alleged that he created this competitive dynamic among these women. He would tell one how much he cared for her, but then gossip about her to another woman that he was being intimate with. And it isolated the women from each other. And this is actually a tactic we haven't talked about a lot on this channel, but gosh, it is so common in cults, manipulative relationships, abusive people. It is so common to create this separation among people within the cult so that the followers don't feel safe leaning on each other for support. They only feel like they can depend on the leader. 
it breaks down their sense of trusting each other. So like if one of the women wanted to confide in another woman, there's this risk that they might be reported to Nature Boy and then punished. I mean, I've had this happen personally, even with like manipulative roommates where I was in a roommate situation with two other people and one of them felt very controlling, but I didn't know how to like bring up that I was feeling manipulated and felt like it was inappropriate. And I'm also not that confrontational of a person or I wasn't at the time. So I was like, I'm just going to try to let this go. Plus, I thought that my other roommate was best friends with her. So I was like, I don't want to cause drama. I like this other girl. I don't want to get in between them. But it started to be very graining and straining and stressful. But then one day, that roommate who I was like, good friends with came to me and was like, oh my gosh, like, do you feel like our roommate's kind of manipulative? And I was like, uh, yes, I do. And I didn't want to say anything because I thought you guys were like best friends. And she was like, I didn't want to say anything because I thought you two were best friends. And it was scary how this one person could just create a separation between two people living in the same home, observing the same behavior, but we were both too afraid to bring it up. And so that's just a small world example. But we also see this like in Scientology where people were expected to write reports on each other for wrongdoing. It's that same idea. And remember, Nature Boy is essentially God at this point. He's claiming to be the second coming. He is, as they now call him presently, the chief or the king. So they aren't even truly able to talk back or even consent to a lot of the actions that are being expected of them because now there's this power dynamic at play. You have to do what he says to do or face the abuse. And the abuse was severe. Trigger warning ahead for DV and sexual violence. Erica, the blueprint, finally set herself free when she witnessed Nature Boy beat another woman and a couple hours labor forced that woman to perform oral on him. I'm just speechless. It's hard to give an appropriate reaction to something like that. I don't know how to quite react to this information, but it makes me feel so sick and disgusted. And a lot of the followers who still support Nature Boy like to say that the allegations against him are false, that the women who have complained about him are just making it up or saying that they consented. But you cannot truly consent to an action if there's a threat if you don't consent to that action. That is not consent. And just because Nature Boy might have said people were free to leave, but they were punished or threatened if they did leave, that is not freedom to leave. So to have the argument that all of these allegations going back years and years and years and years are not true is so dismissive to the women who experienced this abuse and dismissive to the children who experienced it. But we will get to that a little bit later. Velvet, who was once his main wife, also shared that at one point they were monogamous for some time. But then a new girl had come to the commune, or what I'm calling a commune, and she said that she was a virgin. And Nature Boy wanted to take her virginity. But Velvet was like, no, we're together. I'm not comfortable with that. So when she started pushing back on him, he began physically abusing her. And this was on top of the mental abuse and reprogramming that she was already enduring. He would get so violent with her that he would choke her out and she would actually black out. Not only that... He would record videos of her performing oral on him that he had coerced her into doing, and then he would post those videos online publicly. And she didn't even know what was happening. She had even become pregnant by him at this point, and he was still hurting her while she was with child. So there was just no way she could leave. She was financially dependent on him, and she had a child. She wanted to keep them connected. She felt utterly trapped. Plus, her abuse had gotten so bad that she was kept away from the other members because her bruises were visible on her face. So she's even more isolated, but still has this desire to escape. Because not only is she isolated physically, he has taken all of her documentation. She doesn't have her passport. She doesn't have any paper trail. 
But I do want to say that luckily in 2020, she too was able to escape. So one day to everyone's surprise, the whole commune just packed up into a van and drove to Costa Rica. It was here that the group really got some traction and they dove into that connecting with the nature philosophy. Nudity became the norm and showering was not allowed. If you wanted to bathe, you were only allowed to do so in a natural water source, which was usually a river or a creek running through the rainforest, and soap was not allowed. So if you do any of your own research on this cult, you'll find a lot of people, especially on things like Reddit, calling it the stinky cult, which honestly, I cannot imagine how bad it must have smelled. And apparently we're going to time jump here, but when he's deported again, Apparently, Spirit Airlines wouldn't even let him on the plane because of how bad he smelled. We're going to get to that a little bit later. This place that they were living at must have just reeked because they were forced to poop outside at the base of trees as a way to give back to nature. Apparently, you were in an abusive relationship with the earth if you're allowing to take from the earth but not give back. And I'm sorry, if your shit is a gift... (laughs) That's a problem to me. So they had toilets, but they weren't allowed to use them. And I think this is obviously just another way for Nature Boy to demean his followers because I am sure as surely that Nature Boy was probably using those toilets. So as I mentioned earlier, a lot of the beliefs of Nature Boy were very racially charged. He did begin attracting white people. And if there's anything we know about cults, it's that a cult leader will pivot so that he can attract more followers and thus make more money. And that's exactly what he begins to do. So Nature Boy is due for a rebrand and eventually changes the name to Carbon Nation. He also begins inviting white people to Costa Rica to try to get darker and thus more enlightened. But as more white people become attracted to the group, Nature Boy kind of began to use that as ammo in a way. So when family members of some of the white followers began getting concerned about their kids' involvement in the group, and these kids were quite young, the parents would encourage them to leave, and Nature Boy would basically claim that that was a race issue, that the white parents were worried that their child was running off with a black man, when really they just couldn't reach their children and were concerned about where they were. So for example, there's a case of the missing Canadian woman, Kayla Reed. So she told her parents that she went off to on a church trip, but then she just basically ghosted her entire family. They couldn't find her. They couldn't reach her. They hadn't heard from her. So they obviously and logically grew concerned. So they filed a missing persons report. And then she was actually seen on a video with Nature Boy. And because of what happened, they kind of made it appear like Kayla's parents were racist and he was basically like well if you're white you probably can't join my cult but luckily people started calling him out for this and it's really strange because I don't know if he like kicked out some of the white members but he encouraged them to not join his cult go create their own commune living in nature but luckily he started getting called out Former members actually took to social media and said things like, it is not because of your race, it's because of what you are doing. So we're going to fast forward to the end of Costa Rica. It's now 2017, and the van that the group was driving gets pulled over. And basically, no one in the group had appropriate or updated documentation to be allowed to stay in the country. And get this. Apparently, Nature Boy had been confiscating people's documentation so they couldn't leave. When his ex-wife told her story, she shared that he had taken all of her documents, including her passport. So she couldn't leave the group even if she tried. She didn't know where her passport was. I can't imagine how trapped she must have felt. Even the vehicle's paperwork was expired and six members' passports had expired as well. The cops were literally like, they have overstayed their welcome. So they were all deported. And luckily, this meant that Kayla Reed would actually be sent home. But unfortunately, it meant that Nature Boy would need to find another country to basically exploit and settle into. And he would eventually move to Panama. 
And the groups bounced around from several tropical countries, including Nicaragua, Belize. They were in Mexico for some time. They ended up in Puerto Rico. And of course, during this time, the group is attracting new members. Waves of members would leave and new members would come in. So of course, this meant that the new members had no history of what was going on within the group. They would have no or a very limited understanding of the terrible things that had happened before them, which could be why Nature Boy to this day still has a harem of followers supporting him. But more on that later. All the new members had to give up their possessions, including money, as well as books. He actually banned books at one time because heaven forbid you learn any information that isn't told to you by Nature Boy. And as things changed within the cult, the abuses just got worse and worse. Nature Boy literally rejected modern day medicine. So not only were members not seeing doctors, they also weren't publicly sharing any diseases they might have had because according to Nature Boy's philosophy, disease isn't real. Apparently, according to him, and it's my understanding he followed the Dr. Sebi alkaline diet, believing that you can rid all disease by keeping your body in an alkaline state, and this is not scientifically proven, but if it resonates with you, you do you. That's not what this video is about. But Nature Boy also took it a step further by claiming that you could literally cure all of your diseases by living by nature's rules. So as the group grew and people were having intercourse with one another, I'm sure you can imagine STDs were beginning to run rampant, but most followers wouldn't even be diagnosed until they left the group. However, it is alleged that one woman ended up in the hospital with what is believed to have been HIV. Another woman actually stopped taking her heart medication at Nature Boy's approval, and sadly, she ended up passing away, and Nature Boy didn't really do anything about it, and he refused to give her belongings back to her family. I mean, what a vile human. Ex-member Velvet also shared that the men of the group were expected to take on more of a service role because the women were only allowed to sleep with Nature Boy. They weren't supposed to be sleeping with the other men at this point. She actually alleges that Nature Boy had the intentions of turning all the men into eunuchs and actually cutting off their genitalia. But of course, that is alleged. The members also believed that due to their proximity to Nature Boy, they could receive downloads or guidance from the spirit world. But in order to do this, they would have to drink Nature Boy's semen. I truly can't understand or wrap my brain around this being any sort of satisfaction for a person. Like just watching people drink your bodily fluids, it just feels so disgusting. And it's a very disorienting example of the control he had over people in the group. And that's probably exactly what his motivation was in getting people to drink his semen. He's exerting control. He's seeing how far he can get people to go. And this, it's just from a woman's point of view, it's just an example of a man not understanding a woman's body. But he actually says that when a woman swallows a man's semen, their cells begin to change and they become more like that man. So in this case, if they drink his semen, they would become more godlike more pure, more enlightened, closer to God. Also, I mean, this man just doesn't stop. He he believed that it wasn't right to have vaginal intercourse with a woman unless she was ovulating because semen holds genetic information and you can't waste genetic information. If a woman isn't ovulating, she should only do oral or anal. So which is it? Like he says, all of this in the same breath. The sperm gets ate the fuck up. Right? When you pop off in her vagina, when you when you uh ejaculate into a woman, the sperm gets ate the fuck up. The knowledge that you have in, in this because that's what the inside the sperm is what? Chromosomes, information. We're computers transferring information. So it's like if a if a chick has sex with five and you have sex with her when she's not obviously right you're wasting knowledge the only time you should have sex in the vagina 
it's during ovulation. Every other time, it should be anal or she should be swallowing your sperm. Point blank, period. Why? I will tell you because we're organic computers. And Phi's knowledge, your woman is trying to marry you. She's trying to have your mind. What happens when she swallows your sperm, when she swallows your semen, she's swallowing your sperm. What happens is that sperm, its microRNAs gets picked up by her own genetics and starts to reproduce through her ribosome your, your proteins. She literally starts to starts to actually become you Gross. because your microRNAs come and interrupt her microRNAs and start reproducing your proteins and your knowledge. This is how he gets all of the women at a swallow. You can't have both. If you need to conserve the information in the semen, wouldn't that mean you don't ejaculate at all? Like, wouldn't you need to conserve that information? I mean, come on, dude. But but we're going to move on because I'm just tired of talking about Nature Boy's semen. Now, this next piece of information is incredibly sad, really disturbing, really unsettling. So again, I want to offer a trigger warning. This trigger warning is for child loss and child abuse. It is alleged that there were multiple unborn babies during the time the cult was most active, including one instance of Nature Boy forcing a pregnant woman to take shots of tequila. And this ultimately and allegedly led to the death of that child. How many people have to die or be hurt before Nature Boy just stops? Like how many? He also went online to share publicly that he had let his child play with his male member immediately after sleeping with that child's mother in an effort to not make intercourse and penises seem weird. Like, immediately, like post-coital. Like, I like just felt nauseous even talking about it. So, oh man, I feel sick. We have to move on. So by this point, the group is in Panama, and they're soon deported back to America because they're literally deemed an international threat. And I'm sure Nature Boy was able to spin this and somehow make himself the victim. And I believe, too, that this is when they were denied entry on the plane for their terrible odor because you might have forgotten because we've covered so much disgusting information, but he didn't let people bathe or use soap while they're basically shitting in the woods. Anyways, I think they ended up in Puerto Rico for some time, and then the group found themselves in Hawaii in 2020. And we all know what was going on in 2020. And because of this, we'll call it event, the government had issued support in the form of PPP loans, and several of the cult followers applied for these PPP loans. And guess what? Guess what they did once they got the money? They had to turn the money over to Nature Boy, of course, because yet again, he has to control all of the finances, but he wasn't going to let himself be controlled. It was the time of the Great Quarantine, and Hawaii had issued strict directives on quarantining. But Nature Boy and his cult decided that those rules just didn't apply to them. So not only did they leave their home and go off to the beach, they were also engaging in the wildlife. Green sea turtles are a threatened species, and federal laws have been put into place in Hawaii to discourage people from touching them. Touching a sea turtle can disturb them and it can disrupt their natural cycle of life and strip their shells of algae that they need to protect them from deadly infections. Furthermore, turtles are considered sacred in Hawaii. But was Nature Boy going to respect another culture's spirituality? No. He was seen touching one of the turtles because he had never seen one out in the wild. Like, A, I thought you were Nature Boy. You're God, don't you know everything? Wouldn't you know not to disturb this sacred animal by touching it? And two, if you lived in Costa Rica for how long and never saw a sea turtle? I mean, I volunteered in Costa Rica with sea turtles because there is a massive effort to rehabilitate turtle habitats and protect the animals. And you never saw one? It's just... So confusing to me, but honestly, the more we can poke holes in just everything that this guy says and did, the better, because he does still have loyal followers, so we really need to just, like, uno reverse every claim this guy makes. 
So since this group was violating their quarantine order and disturbing the turtles, they were asked to leave Hawaii. All 21 of them. So now, here we are in Georgia, where Nature Boy and his group have resettled, and it's looking a lot different. The group is living in a large house, and maybe they even started bathing again, but probably not. Nature Boy now begins to go by the 3-3 three, three God and Chief. He's really attaching himself to the number three, like the, as in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he's having his followers do this new symbol. And he's attracted a literal harem of women who literally obey his every word. If he tells them to sit, they sit. If he tells them to hit each other, they slap each other. Rest! Yeah. I know that's right. <laughs> Down. He creates this symbol and gesture that his followers do to show loyalty. <laughs> All right. You guys are in unison. It's like y'all. They go live frequently to preach his weird philosophies. And he just goes on these kind of, they seem to be like drunken or inebriated rants. And this is where things really begin to go downhill for Nature Boy. His true downfall begins. So they all start going live. And in these lives, Nature Boy shows off the control he has over these women. He literally shows the abuses that he puts them through. They wear bruises like badges of honor, and if they don't do this hand symbol immediately when he demands it, he threatens to hurt them. Like, literally, in the live video, he can be seen threatening women. A woman called Malia had become the main wife, so to speak, and the way he treats her is terrible and disgusting. Side of you, don't you? Tell the truth to these motherfucking folk. Now, front on the real nigga. You know you trying to make me people feel sorry for you. Ain't nobody feel sorry for you, motherfucker. Cause you baby be here, bitch. I ain't actually come here. You came here on your motherfucking own, ho. Fuck out of here. He demands that she look like she wants him and starts verbally abusing her on these lives. And people are commenting on the lives. And trying to call him out, but he just, like, ignores them. And there's other videos of her talking about how much he triggers her, and she just appears so broken. She really believed that she was going to him for healing and knowledge and that this abuse was required on her healing path. And it's really heartbreaking to see. And what's even more heartbreaking is knowing that she still supports him. She's rallying to get him out of jail. But she did try to leave at least once, but like many victims of relationships, she returned. You know, this had become her family, her home, her community, and who knows what threats he had made to her if she left. So even though she saw the and experienced it herself, I'm sad to say that to this day, she still supports him. And I think it's safe to say that she is kind of leading the charge and claiming that all the accusations are false. All the investigators are corrupt and... It's just always so sad to see someone who's entered a group or a collective in need of healing who is going to have to end up going through a lot more healing and therapy to unlearn the brainwashing and relearn that that abuse is not normal. And I really, really hope that her and the other followers see the light of day soon. We see a lot of comparisons here between this cult and Nexium, you know, a harem of women still loudly supporting their leader who is in jail. We see this even with the FLDS, with Warren Jeffs. I mean, he still has supporters on the outside. And much like Keith Raniere, Alicio Bishop has been blocked off from contacting anyone on the outside, luckily. He remains now in jail without bond because he is deemed a flight risk. And this is a great thing. It's also great that he's been cut off from communicating with the people on the outside because if he continues to talk to the followers, they're only going to be bolstered. They need to be completely cut off from him in order to heal. 
And he needs to take accountability and pay for what he did and what he has been doing for so long. And I really hope that prosecutors are going to be able to look at his long, long, long history of a and his criminal record. And I think he deserves to spend a long time in prison. So everyone, I think that's going to be where we end today's video. And I would love to hear your thoughts down below. If there's any additional details that you are aware of, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. If you have an experience personally, like a loved one was or is in this group, or you have been, um, and you want to share your story, I would love to hear it. Or if you want to correct any information I shared, please let me know. My sources were a mixture of articles and YouTube videos and interviews with ex-victims and the legal documents. So if I misinterpreted anything or you want to clarify anything, please just feel free to comment down below. And I'll definitely keep you guys updated on what happens with the trial on February 20th. But if you want another video in the meantime, uh, please let me know down below. So with that, everyone, please just stay skeptical. There are a lot of people out there making wild claims and stating opinion like it's fact. And we really need to just be careful of that. I want to send a message to all the victims of this cult, and both past, present, and hopefully not, but potential future. Please take care of yourself. I really, really hope that you're able to heal. And I really hope that if you've gotten on the other side of it, that you're happy and free and thriving. I really do. I want to thank you all again so much for watching. Remember to always ask questions, stay skeptical, and just be safe out there. Until next time, thank you all so much. I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you.